Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to look at some Monterey Bay Nods. This right here is the Sea Otter. This was their first venture into making a totally USA made knife and it was awesome to see that. I have had the pleasure to hang out with Sanford Owen and Ray Laconico at Blade Show or let me just say talk with them and they're so so nice both of them. So it was an honor to be able to own some of their knives especially their first design. This is a drop point and magna cut and it's rock weld to the correct hardness. Very, very exciting stuff. I threw one of their Timascus clips and as you can see, it's been through, you know, what and back. And, you know, I, I'm still enjoying the night. This one's gotten so, so smooth. The following year after I got this one, I got lucky and picked up this one at their table at Blade Show. I think this was two years ago or yeah, probably two years ago. It got some nice frag on this one. I put, I think I put this, one of their other clips on here. And this one has a nice compound grind. I think Ray even grinds the, this one with the compound grind. Super, super slicey hollow grind up here in the front and a flat grind up here in the back. And this one, they actually started putting the Magna Cut right here. Uh, this one, I think it might be in the inside of it. I'm not sure. But absolutely love the knife. And that's one of the first boots I go looking for every year at Blade Show. But they just announced, and I saw it, and I got very lucky on the raffle because I got this one on a raffle. This one right here is the brand new River Otter Warney. And why I was so excited about this one is because... Whenever I bought this one right here, Ray pulled out this blade shape out of his pocket, a hang ground one, and I got to drool at it, I got to play around with it, and then I had to hand it back to him. So I've been wanting uh, this blade shape ever since, so now that I actually have it, I'm over the moon. I think it's uh, a beautiful looking design, very minimalistic, it's nice and slim. Let's see, did they put it? Yeah, they put the magnet cut right there. God, dog it. I don't know why. Yeah, it's hard to show with the acid wash. And I have to say this, I think this is a blasted stone wash finish. I was kind of worried, but magna cut has held up nicely. This one's a little bit more faded because of the use. And uh, I reviewed and tested this one. I thought it performed great. And I will do the same with this one. Uh, stunning looking knife. See, this is the, the standard bent titanium clip that they come with, but it's nice to see that these clips fit that whole pattern. So I'm sure I'll probably buy at least one of these, or they got zirconium ones right now on their site. Um, I'll probably buy one for this one as well. Let me give you some size comparisons if you have any of the other Monterey Bay knives. Here it is next to the mini old guard. Pretty much the same blade shape, but the old guard is a, a wider knife and the, the old guard is produced overseas. Even though it's produced overseas, it's got a ZDP 189 blade at like 67 Rockwell. That is so awesome. So if you have the old guard, this is a small old guard warning. Then you have about, you know, a, an idea of how big this is in length. Now, of course, this one's a, a wider knife, like I said earlier. And then on top of it, we have the Monterey Bay Knives Slayback in ZDP. And let's go butt to butt. So it looks like the, the small old guard is a little bit longer. Let's go butt to butt. Yeah, it's a little bit longer, not by much. It's a little bit closer in line with the Slayback length. And of course, this is the full size old guard. My first Monterey Bay knife, I think I purchased. This was the first run of these. So yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think about the River Otter. We also have the brand new Devo Knives Lush. And I didn't even know anything about this. I happened to be on Instagram whenever Lefty EDC posted about it. This was a traditional pocket knives exclusive drop. I don't know if there's any available. There was just red whenever I picked this up. I was kind of late to the game, but I was able to pick one up. And I'm kind of glad. I don't have many uh, fat car red fat carbon knives. I think I only have one other, and I like it. So you have that you know, beautiful Warncliffe or Sheep's Foot Blade. Nice hollow grind, dual uh, fullers on both sides, that dual jimping for doing pull cuts and stuff like that. Pretty smooth. And if, if I try to flick down here, I can do it. But if I want a nice positive uh, flip, I can flip up here 
and that rockets out. Got a nice forward finger troll on this one. Yeah, this was quite a surprise. I like whenever I hear about stuff and I'm actually able to still get it. It's not so much fun whenever you hear about it after they're gone. So I do apologize if these are gone. These are in S90 V Steel. And the price was right. I think the OEM on this one's Kubi as well. And I got to say, Kubi in the last year, or let's say since the first Devo design that Kubi did to now is just leaps and bounds better. You know, they continue to get better along with a bunch of other companies, but Kubi has just been very, very impressive. It's, I think it's ground pretty darn thin. Should be a good little slicer. Haven't got to test it out yet, but I will. Who else got one of these? And what do you think? It's nice and lightweight. It's a good size. I can choke back if I want to still get a four finger grip on it, but this spot is just money right here. And that jumping's perfect for that. Lefty's good at uh, jump, jumping placement. He calls it the Vox jumping. Got the wire pocket clip that's reversible. I don't know if it takes a wire pocket clip replacement or whatever. Tight fit mitt on those fat carbon scales. No crazy gaps or anything. And I, I gotta say the red, I, it, or at least the ones I have of the fat carbon, the red pops the most in the light. I mean, it just dances off the light. You get red, black, red, black, and it's that shiny with the matte and the red. I think it looks good. The top flipper's done pretty cool. Sorry about my dry hands. That's just uh, factors of my accident. Got the top where you can kind of flip like that. And they even have this little portion if you want to do a rock back. Or you can put your finger on top, your thumb on top and rock back. I find the, the best ways for me to do it is to do the reach around or to grab this portion right here. At least the way my detent styled, those are the two best deployments. Got a nice satin finish i'm so glad that kevin talked him into start doing these type of satin finishes i used to hate kubi satin finishes they were so weird looking and i know it was all done on a cnc but you know this in my opinion is a lot a lot a bigger much bigger improvement let's say that what do y'all think about this one? let me give you a size comparison hopefully they do another run of these i know i'm sure a lot of people like myself had almost missed out or did miss out. It's about the same exact size as the Ontario Rat Model 2. It might be the exact same size. So Rat 2 is an excellent size. If it wouldn't be for this deep choil, I would love the Rat 2. But for some reason, that choil just makes me really uncomfortable in this grip. I got to kind of choke up on it. I think this was 200 bucks. You know, tie, tie frame with the fat carbon S90V. I think that is pretty darn impressive. Titanium backspacer. The balance is a little back. Eh, not really, because that's a forward troll area right there. So, and I picked up this one, and this is a nostalgic thing. If if you were around whenever these knives first came out, you may know what I'm talking about. But definitely not something I would have picked up any other reason. I, I was on Amazon, and I don't even think the same company makes these as the one I used to have back in the day. And I'm not an assisted fan. But this is the Black Hawk Be Warned. And I remember one of our first got into the knife community maybe 12 years ago. I don't know. And I'm talking about on YouTube, uh, not in the forums. But uh, I had picked up one of these and this was one of my favorite knives. I mean, look at that bulky, bulky tip. That thing is egregious right there. And I don't remember if my original, I don't think it had the assisted opening now one cool thing about this is is uh this one has a detent you can tell because if you watch that lock bar see how it's touching the frame now if you open this see how it jumped up so it does have a detent hole now whether it's gonna flip good enough after i take that out that's gonna be the real thing but i think one of the even thing one thing that bothers me even more is look at that pocket clip now that is a parts pin pocket clip if i ever seen one that's hideous and it's it's very very light the g10 is really nice and grippy it's not overly grippy but it's grippy it does flip well and i will say the the ad on amazon was very misleading because it does say assisted but it says assisted on phosphor bronze washers that is definitely teflon which I don't care. I just, I, I hate whenever they, they, they put a description and it's not what it says it is. And 
it said assisted in the top, but when you read in the thing, it says assisted by flipper tab manual operation. That's not manual. That is assisted. So I think it's, it may be their old um, literature in the uh, paragraph underneath. So it definitely kind of has that Yojimbo vibe, especially for that pokey pokey tip. And I think my original Blackhawk, I, I want to say was in Aussie 8, not D2. And look at that. No sharpening charles. So you got some bubble gum at the end of that edge. See how it's widening up back there? Not so bad on this side. But on this side, you can definitely see the widening. So if I do do anything with this, I will cut something in there. But this might be a, a nice dedicated truck knife. You know, I'm super locked in. It's very comfortable right here. Very, very comfortable. So yeah, that's, that was more of a nostalgic uh, knife. It was expensive too for what it is. I think these are made by, I saw it in the thing. I think these are made by Baron Son now. If somebody knows that, let me know. I don't know who originally made the Blackhawk knives. Um, but I'm pretty sure I read that in the little literature as well. These are made in Taiwan, so that's a good thing. The quality is definitely nice. Every besides the things I don't like, it's definitely it feels like a a nice knife. It doesn't feel like a clunky knife. The assist is nice and snappy. You know, not something I really like anymore, but it it whacks out, and I can overcome that assist. Uh, I just prefer my manual because I, I just like that. I don't know that action. I don't like to have to overcome a blade that, especially like that, that could fly out of my hands and stab me in my foot. So that does it for the new blades that I had come in. Let me know if you want to see a review on any of these. Uh, I will definitely probably be reviewing the River Otter. Um, I, man, I'm so excited to have it. And I already slapped the other clip on there. I think I might buy one of the zirconium clips to go with the darker blast. Because this one's like a bead blast and this one's like a dark blast. So it kind of doesn't go or maybe I'll put my Tymascus one on here, refinish it. I don't know. And yeah, I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. Great. Y'all have a great Christmas and a safe Christmas. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Uh.